Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was taking photos of his favorite banana. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. Who could that be? It's the elephant family. Mr. Monkey, hello! Boy, are we glad to see you! We have an enormous problem. Oh, how can I help you today? We're heading off on our vacation, but our family van doesn't seem to fit us anymore. It used to fit us just fine. Hmm, that's strange. Let me take a look at it. Mr. Monkey checks the van. He checks the front seat. He checks the back seat. He checks the trunk. So, what's wrong with our van, Mr. Monkey? Why won't it fit us anymore? Well, your van is very small, and your family is very big. You have a lot of elephants that need to fit into your van. Now that you mention it, there are a few more of us since we bought the van. Can you fix it? Hmm, Mr. Monkey needs to figure this out. Off to his workbench. Let's see. The very big elephant family is having a hard time fitting inside their very small van. Hmm, well, when houses become too small for a family, they can either buy a bigger house or they can build more rooms onto the house they have. That gives Mr. Monkey an idea, but he's going to need a lot of supplies. He'll need some wood, He'll also need some windows and a whole lot of seats. He better take all of his nuts and bolts too, just to be safe. And of course, his trusty Chucky wrench. He isn't finished just yet. Finally, Mr. Monkey is all done. Phew! Wow! Look at that, everyone! Cool! You get to ride in that? Well, don't just look at it, Elephant Family. Go on inside, try it out. Hey, Gally, I can stretch Ow. my trunk out! Ha -ha! Fabulous! Mr. Monkey, you did it! Our van is no longer small and cramped. It's big and spacious. There's so much trunk space. <laughs> I can feel the wind in my ears again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all your hard work. Now we can continue our vacation! Next up, Albuquerque! Another satisfied customer. Or should I say, customers. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to whatever he was doing. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was working on his afternoon painting when suddenly the garage bell rang. When the garage bell rings, it means Mr. Monkey has a visitor in his garage. 
Mr. Monkey loves visitors. Let's go see who it could be. Why, it's Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Monkey is always happy to see his friend Mr. Chameleon. Hello, Mr. Monkey. I just found my favorite red jacket. Funny thing, now I'm red. I was wondering, do you think you could paint my car red to match? That's one of the many fun things about Mr. Chameleon. Sometimes he turns the color of whatever he touches. And today, he's apparently turned red. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I better be on my way in my bright red car. Another satisfied customer. Now that Mr. Monkey's job is all done, he can get back to working on his painting. The garage bell. Another visitor. It's Mr. Chameleon again. Only this time he's... orange? Mr. Monkey, would you believe it? I just found this bright orange hat. Only now, I'm orange. Could you paint my car orange so it matches? Sure, why not? Mr. Monkey can paint the car orange. Oh, that's just great, Mr. Monkey. Thank you so much. Now that Mr. Monkey's job is finished, it's time for him to get back to his painting. Hey, Mr. Monkey. I've got this pair of yellow boots. Yellow boots, Mr. Monkey. You do not find these every day. I don't suppose you could repaint my car yellow to match. A green shirt, Mr. Monkey. My favorite blue jeans. Look at my fancy purple tie. I've got my nice red jacket on again, Mr. Monkey. But uh, I was wondering, could you paint my car red again? Poor Mr. Monkey. He can't keep painting Mr. Chameleon's car forever. What can he do? He heads to his workbench to try and come up with a solution. Mr. Monkey needs to fix this problem, but what color can he paint a car when he needs every color? First, Mr. Chameleon needed his car to be painted red to match his red jacket. Then he needed his car painted orange to match his orange hat. Then he needed his car painted yellow to match his yellow boots. Then he needed his car painted green to match his green shirt. Then he needed his car painted blue to match his favorite blue jeans. And finally, he needed his car painted purple to match his purple tie. There must be some way to make Mr. Chameleon's car match with all the colors of Mr. Chameleon's clothing and Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Monkey's got an idea, but before he can get started, he's going to need his trusty monkey wrench. Whoops. I mean his <clears throat> trusty paintbrush. <laughs> Mr. Monkey has done it. Mr. Monkey made Mr. Chameleon's car a rainbow. Oh, Mr. Monkey, I am so happy. Not only is my car red, orange, and yellow, but it's also green, blue, and purple. It will match everything I own. Thank you so much, Mr. Monkey. You've made my car absolutely perfect. Now that Mr. Monkey's job is done, he can get back to finishing his painting. Magnifique, Monsieur Monkey. See you next time. <laughs> Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was guessing the weight of his bushel of bananas, when suddenly, the garage bell rang. 
Who could it be? It's Mr. Coyote, the carnival barker. Step right up, Mr. Monkey, step right up! Hurry, hurry, hurry! I need your help! I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, Mr. Coyote. What seems to be the problem? Cracks and scrapes, bents and dents, Mr. Monkey. My cars have got them all, and I don't know what's to be done about it. Uh, which cars? I don't see any. Why, my bumper cars! Sure, the kids are having fun, but any more bumps like these and it'll spell disaster. They'll go from bumper cars to broken cars. Hmm, let me take a look at them. Mr. Monkey checks one of the bumper cars. He checks the battery. It looks okay. Then he checks the steering wheel. It turns all right. He even checks the pedals. They go and stop just fine. So, Mr. Monkey, what's wrong with my bumper cars? Step right up and tell me. Don't be shy. Well, the bumper cars work just fine. The problem is... There's nothing on them to bump with. They're just crashing cars. Well, if this ain't just a dilly of a pickle, what can I do, Mr. Monkey? Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Let's see. Mr. Coyote's bumper cars are supposed to bump and bounce, but instead, they crash and crack. What Mr. Coyote needs is something to cushion the outside of his bumper cars to soften the impact when they bump. Mr. Monkey has a plan. He just needs some soft, bouncy materials. If Mr. Monkey covers the outside of the bumper cars with something soft and bouncy, that would keep the bumper cars from breaking. He'll also need some rope to keep them from falling off the bumper cars. And of course, he'll need... his trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, he uses his monkey wrench to get a spare tire down from the ceiling. He then finds a mattress, an inflatable pool tube, and a bunch of rope. Feast your eyes upon the greatest spectacle you've ever seen. A monkey repairs a batch of bashed and broken bumper cars. Yay! Mr. Monkey stretches the tire around the first bumper car. Next, he gets the pool tube around the second bumper car. Now that's a winning ring toss if I ever seen one. You get a prize. <laughs> Mr. Monkey then inflates the pool tube and ties it in place. Mr. Monkey folds the mattress in half and ties it together and puts it around the last bumper car, wrapping it nice and tight. And that's a wrap, folks. Mr. Monkey, the bumper cars are looking simply bumpy. Go ahead and give them a try. All right, kids, it's time for the thrill ride of a lifetime. Well, ain't that a how do you do, Mr. Monkey? You saved my bumper cars from breaking. I can't thank you enough, but I can upgrade your prize to the big cuddly monkey. All right, kids. Let's get these bumper cars back to the carnival. Another satisfied customer. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to guessing the weight of his bananas.
Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was getting ready for Valentine's Day. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. Who could it be? It's Miss Monkey. Oh, uh, what a surprise. H hello there, Miss Monkey. Hello, Mr. Monkey. What can I do for you today? Oh, I have such a dilemma, Mr. Monkey. You see, I have these two scooters. I can ride one scooter. And I can ride the other scooter. But I can't ride both scooters together. Oh, what's the point of owning two scooters if I can only use one at a time? Is there any way you can help me, Mr. Monkey? That is a problem, Miss Monkey. Let me take a look at these scooters. Mr. Monkey checks the scooters. He checks the handlebars. All seems to be working there. He checks the tires on the first scooter. Then the tires on the second scooter. They appear to be in working order. He even checks the scooter decks. Seems sturdy. Everything seems to be in working order, Miss Monkey. Well, of course they work just fine, but it sure would be nice to use them together. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Miss Monkey, I think I may have a solution to your problem. Would you like to join me at the workbench and we can figure it out together? <laughs> Let's go, Mr. Monkey! And with that, Mr. Monkey and Ms. Monkey head to Mr. Monkey's workbench. Let's see. Miss Monkey has two scooters, but she can only scoot around on one of them at a time. Mr. Monkey needs to figure out a way that Ms. Monkey can use both scooters together. He could put the two scooters together and make one wide scooter. No, that won't work. The scooter is too wide to scoot on. Mr. Monkey could put the scooters back to back, but then Miss Monkey wouldn't know if she was coming or going. Mr. Monkey has an idea, but he's going to need some supplies. Mr. Monkey needs two pipes, two flags, a red one and a blue one, two nuts, and finally, two bolts. That just leaves one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. Mr. Monkey places the blue flag on top of the first pipe. And then he places the red flag on top of the second pipe. Then Mr. Monkey attaches the first pipe to the first scooter with a nut and a bolt. And then he attaches the second pipe to the second scooter with his last nut and bolt. Um, Mr. Monkey, is it finished? Yes, all done. The problem is you have two scooters, but only one of you. But if there were two monkeys to ride the scooters... Then they could both ride the scooters together. Mr. Monkey, would you like to join me for a scooter ride in the park? I'd be honored, Miss Monkey. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was getting ready for some fun in the sun. When all of a sudden, the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. He loves having visitors. Who could it be? 
It's Monsieur Bulldog. Hi there, Monsieur Bulldog. Bonjour, Monsieur Monkey. How do you do? Very well, thank you. How are you today? Moi? I am terrible. I was planning to pedal my bicyclette to the park today so I could run with the butterflies and eat my baguette in the beautiful sunshine. But I have a very, very big problem. What is it, Monsieur Bulldog? I will demonstrate. Ah, now regard. Le problème. Do you see? Mr. Monkey can see. Monsieur Bulldog's legs are too short to reach the pedals. I cannot ride my bicyclette in the park like this. What about the butterflies? What about my baguette? The day she is ruined. <laughs> what is a French bulldog like me to do, Monsieur Monkey? Can you help me? <laughs> well, let's take a look. Mr. Monkey checks the bicycle. First, he checks the little tire. Then he checks the big tire. Then he checks the basket. He even checks the pebble. Everything seems to be in working order. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Monsieur Bulldog, I think I have a solution to your problem. Oh, merci, merci. I would love nothing more than to ride to the park today and see all of the beautiful butterflies. Mr. Monkey swings off to his workbench. Let's see. Monsieur Bulldog wants to ride his new bicycle, but his little legs are too short to reach the pedals. Mr. Monkey needs to find a way to help Monsieur Bulldog pedal his bike. Mr. Monkey has an idea. But first he'll need some supplies. He'll need four blocks of wood, two short pieces and two tall pieces, two loops of rubber, plus eight bolts and eight nuts. And of course, his trusty monkey wrench. I know just how to fix your problem, Monsieur Bulldog. With these, how you say, blocks of wood? Mr. Monkey gets to work. Mr. Monkey starts with the first pedal. He'll need one of his short pieces of wood and one of his tall pieces of wood, plus four of his bolts and four of the nuts. One, two, three, and four. And he'll take one of his loops of rubber. That leaves Mr. Monkey with half of his materials remaining to do the same thing on the other pedal. Mr. Monkey is all done. Incroyable! Hop on, Monsieur Bulldog. Take it for a spin. All right. Allons-y. Let's go. <laughs> you have done it, Monsieur Monkey. Now I can cycle to the beautiful park on my bicyclette. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Monsieur Monkey. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye. I am coming, my beautiful butterflies! <laughs> Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey goes and gets his own bicyclette. And now, Mr. Monkey, it's time to put the pedal to the metal. Let's go! Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was making his favorite snack, a banana and peanut butter sandwich, when all of a sudden, the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. 
He loves having visitors. Who could it be? It's two visitors, Mr. Mouse and Mr. Pig. Hello, Mr. Mouse. Good to see you. Mr. Pig, how are things? Well, Mr. Monkey, we're... we're... In a bit of a pickle. Gosh, I love pickles. They go so well with a nice cheese sandwich. Mmm, yum. We have pickles at the house. But you know we can't go back to our house. What do you mean you can't go back to your house? You live there. Well, all our friends are there. Well, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. Why don't you want to see your friends? No, oh, it's not them. Here's the thing, Mr. Monkey. We absolutely love making food. And we love having our friends over to eat our food. <laughs> but now we've made so much food and had so many friends over that our house is a mess. It's a... a... a pigsty! It's absolutely a pigsty. And I should know. I'm a pig. Whee! And if there's one thing we don't like... It's a mess. So, we thought you might have some ideas about how to help us share our love of food with our friends, but without making such an awful mess. Hmm. I could recommend a good carpet cleaner. Or maybe... Let me see. Mr. Monkey checks the van. He checks the steering wheel. He checks the back of the van. He checks the windows. Stay right there. I have an idea. Mr. Monkey heads off to his workbench. Let's see. Mr. Pig and Mr. Mouse love making food for their friends at their house. But they don't love the mess their house becomes after their friends come over and eat the food. How can Mr. Pig and Mr. Mouse continue to make delicious food for their friends, but without the messy house that comes with it? Instead of inviting their friends to their house to eat, they can take the food to them. Their house will stay perfectly clean, no messes to clean up. Mr. Monkey has an idea, but he's going to need some materials. Mr. Monkey needs two poles, a window curtain, lots of nuts and bolts, and of course, his trusty monkey wrench. Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, Mr. Monkey cuts a rectangle. Then, Mr. Monkey hangs the curtain. He secures it with one, two, three, four bolts. He raises the curtain. And now for the final touches. Mr. Monkey is done. Wow, uh, Mr. Monkey, you put a window in our van. But how will that help us with our messy house? Well, you love sharing food with all your friends, but you don't like the mess your friends leave in your house. So now, instead of your friends coming to your house for food, you can take the food to your friends. I've put a kitchen inside your van. What an incredible idea! If we bring food to our friends, there's no mess to clean up in our house. Thank you so much, Mr. Monkey. Let's go and share our love of food with all our friends. Ready to roll. Bye, Mr. Monkey. We See you later. There goes two satisfied customers. And with that, Mr. Monkey finishes making his sandwich. 
and a big mess. Uh-oh. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was doing a banana dance, when suddenly the garage bell rang. When the garage bell rings, that means Mr. Monkey has a visitor. Why, it's Mr. Porcupine, the town's theater teacher. Oh dear Mr. Monkey, my troubles you would not believe. They truly seem impossible. Nothing one could ever conceive. Uh, hello, Mr. Porcupine. What seems to be the After my morning acting class, off to my truck I danced. When I started driving, I had to take another glance. In circles, 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 my truck would only go. Can you fix my vehicle? This porcupine must know. A truck that only drives in circles? How odd. Mr. Monkey checks the truck. He checks the engine. It looks okay. Then he checks the windshield wipers. They look okay too. He even checks the windows. They open and close just fine. Give me the news, Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic. Hurry, quickly, or surely I will panic. Please stay calm, Mr. Porcupine. Nothing is wrong with your truck. It's working perfectly. But how could that be? Hmm. There is one more thing I can check. <gasps> oh, yes, 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 please do. You're a hero among monkey, monkey mechanics. In my heart, I always knew. Aha! This tire is flat. It has holes all over it. And this tire is flat, too. And even this tire is flat. Wow, look at all the holes in this one. Well, at least this tire is fine. Mr. Porcupine, you have three flat tires and only one that is working properly. That's why you're driving in circles. What? What? How could three of my tires go flat? I, 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 I smell a rat. Actually, I believe you caused your own problem, Mr. Porcupine. I think some of your quills flew into your tires when you were dancing this morning. They poked holes in the rubber and all the air blew out. Oh, I am desperate. Please, will you help me before I take one more dizzy drive? I'll throw away the key. Actually, I need the key. That was just for dramatic effect. <laughs> I hope I could find it this time. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Let's see. Mr. Porcupine wants to drive in a straight line, but his quills pop three of his truck's four tires, and it's making him drive in circles. Maybe what Mr. Porcupine needs are different tires. Right now, he has rubber tires, and his quills poke holes in them very easily. If Mr. Porcupine had wooden wheels, they'd be much stronger and his quills would not make holes. So, Mr. Monkey needs four wooden wheels. One, two, three, four. He'll also need some nuts and bolts to put the wheels on. And of course he'll need... his trusty monkey wrench! 
your new set of wheels, Mr. Porcupine. A thrilling beginning to Act 3. Behold! Mr. Monkey has to lift the truck, it's simply quite a breeze. He has the brains of Einstein and the strength of Hercules. He removes the tires one by one with the only wrench he trusts. It makes his job so easy, for a monkey it's a must. Now the wooden wheels go on, also one by one. He twists the nuts and bolts so tight it looks as though he's done. Bravo, bravo, Mr. Monkey. You fix my truck so well. I'm compelled to do my happy dance, for you've made my big heart swell. Look, 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 no holes, no air leaking out. It's time for me to take the wheel and put a stop to any doubt. Oh, thank you, thank you. I can drive in a straight line again. I'm the luckiest porcupine in the world. I'd like to thank Mr. Monkey, his trusty monkey wrench, the makers of wooden wheels, and of course, my parents, for making me the porcupine I am today. Mwah, 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 mwah. Another satisfied customer. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to his banana dance. After he cleans up all these quills, Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was rocking out to his favorite band, the Wild Bananas, when suddenly the garage bell rang. Oh, a visitor. Mr. Monkey loves having visitors. Who could it be? It's Mr. Wolf. Hello, Mr. Wolf. What's up, man? What's up? Oh, uh, do you mean the ceiling? Or my hammock? Those are both all the way up there. You know, music is my life. Wah, 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 wah! And my dream is to go on tour with my band, The Lone Wolves. Oh! oh, wow. That sounds fun. How can I help all of you? All of who? It's just me. I'm the one and only member of The Lone Wolves. There aren't any other members? Nope. Just me. I play all the instruments. But lately, I've been too tired to play at all. You see, I have to unpack all the instruments by myself and carry them onto the stage. No wonder you're tired. A rock star can't be tired, Mr. Monkey. I just wish there was an easier way to play music. Hmm, let me see if I can help. Mr. Monkey checks the van. He checks the steering wheel. He checks the engine. He even checks the guitar. I think I have an idea. Rock on! Off to his workbench. Let's see. Mr. Wolf wants to drive around and play music with his one wolf band, the Lone Wolves. But he has to unpack the instruments and carry them all the way to the stage by himself. This leaves him too tired to play. Mr. Monkey needs to figure out how to make it easier for Mr. Wolf to unpack and set up so he's not too tired to play. Mr. Monkey has an idea. He just needs some strength roll of tape, some metal pipes, hinges, and a bunch of nuts and bolts. And of course, his trusty monkey wrench. I know how to fix your problem, Mr. Wolf. Really? That's rocket news, Mr. Monkey. Mr. Monkey gets to work.
Mr. Monkey is almost done. Just one last step. Whoa! Pyrotechnics? Yes! All done. So what'd you do exactly, Mr. Monkey Man? So, rock and roll. See, Mr. Wolf, your instruments will always be on stage because your van is the stage. No unpacking and getting tired. Whoa! This means that the Lone Wolves World Tour is on! Thanks for making my One Wolf Band dreams come true, Mr. Monkey Man! This song is dedicated to you! One, two, three, four! Yeah, all right! Sounds amazing! I'm your number one fan! Lone Wolves forever! The Lone Wolves are hitting the road! Thanks again, Mr. Monkey Man! See you when I get back! Ow! Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey gets back to listening to his favorite band. The Lone Wolves. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was hanging out in his hammock. He had been working awfully hard lately and was looking forward to finally relaxing and catching up on his banana eating. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. That means Mr. Monkey has a visitor. I wonder who it could be. It's Mr. Sloth. Hello, Mr. Sloth. What can I do for you today? Mr. Monkey, my car is too fast. I need it to go. Mr. Sloth, I can see if I could make your car go slower. Mr. Monkey was about to go get a better look at Mr. Sloth's car when suddenly... <laughs> Why, it's Ms. Rabbit. Mr. Monkey, you gotta help me. This car is just too slow. I got places to go, places to see. I gotta go, go, go. And this car just goes. Can you help me? Well, hello, Ms. Rabbit. I think I can help make your car go faster. First, let's get a better look at both your cars. First, Mr. Monkey checks the engines. They seem to be running in tip-top shape. Then he checks the steering wheels. They both seem to steer. Finally, Mr. Monkey checks the tires. Yep, they're both just the right amount of tiredness. Not too soft, not too tough. Well, now this is a puzzle. Both cars seem to be just fine. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Mr. Sloth's car is too fast. Ms. Rabbit's car is too slow. If only there was one fix that would fix both problems. One fix to fix them all. Mr. Monkey has a solution. But first, he's going to need some supplies. Mr. Monkey gets a nice big piece of red fabric. Then he gets a nice long metal tube. Then he grabs some metal hooks and, of course, some metal bolts. Mr. Monkey is all set. He just needs one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench!
Mr. Monkey gets to work. Mr. Monkey is all done. A big red curtain? Mr. Monkey, it's a big, big, big red curtain, says Ms. Rabbit. That's right. Mr. Slot's car was too fast for him. And your car, Ms. Rabbit, was too slow. So the one perfect solution to solve both your problems is you should be driving each other's car. Mr. Monkey, it's perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Monkey. Super great job. Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey gets back to what he was doing before. Ah, just the banana eating break Mr. Monkey needed. This is going to take a while. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was organizing his tools. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. A visitor. Mr. Monkey loves having visitors. Who could it be? Hello. Oh, uh, hello there. Uh, I'll be right with you. Hello? Uh, hello again. Uh, just one moment. I, I just need to hang this... Mr. Monkey is very confused. How can the same person be in three different places at once? Hello? Mr. Monkey can't believe his eyes. Standing before him isn't one visitor, or two visitors for that matter, but three visitors. No wonder Mr. Monkey was confused. His visitors look exactly the same. That's because his visitors are the meerkat triplets. Myrna, Marty, and Maribel Meerkat. Nice to meet you three. Uh, what can I do for you today? Well, Mr. Monkey, we entered the Meerkat Motorcycle Contest, and guess what? We won! And the grand prize was three motorcycles. Wow, congratulations! Thanks! We love riding our motorcycles, but we have a problem. You see, we really like to stay together all the time, but these motorcycles must be broken because we keep going, going in different directions. directions. I'll go left, I'll go right, and I'll go straight through. We, we just can't seem to stay together. Can you help us, Mr. Monkey? Interesting. Let me see what I can do about that. Mr. Monkey checks the motorcycles. He checks the tires. He checks the engines. He even checks the seats. So can you help us, Mr. Monkey? We'd really love to ride together. Hmm, everything seems fine with your motorcycles. Mr. Monkey has an idea. He heads off to his workbench. Let's see. The meerkats love riding their motorcycles, but they also like to stay together. And three different motorcycles means they can go in three different directions. Mr. Monkey needs to figure out how to make the meerkats stick together. He'll need four metal bars. One, two, three, four. And eight nuts and bolts. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. And of course, 
his trusty monkey wrench. I know how to fix your problem, Myrna, Marty, and Maribel. Magnificent! Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, Mr. Monkey pushes the motorcycle so they're beside each other. One, two, three. Then, Mr. Monkey takes the four metal bars to connect the motorcycles together. Two in the front, one, two, and two more in the back, three and four. And finally, Mr. Monkey uses the eight nuts and bolts to connect it all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Ta-da! It's your very own three-seater motorcycle. Now you can always stick together when you ride. Try it out. satisfied customers. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to organizing his tools. And organizing his bananas. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was looking at the banana-shaped moon. When all of a sudden, the garage bell rang. A visitor! Mr. Monkey loves visitors. I wonder who it could be. It's done! It's finally done! I have finally finished my rocket ship! Oh boy, Mr. Monkey loves rocket ships. That's amazing! Uh, but who might you be? Oh, sorry. Where are my manners? I am Miss Mole, astronaut. Nice to meet you, Miss Mole. I'm Mr. Monkey. What can I do for you today? Mr. Monkey, all my life I have lived underground in a tiny burrow. But I want to explore and see what's up above me. So I made a rocket ship and I'm going to fly it into outer space to explore the universe. But there's a problem. I want to see everything. Every planet, every moon, and every star that's up there. But when I'm inside my rocket ship, I can't see anything. Mr. Monkey, can you help me? Mind if I take a look at your rocket ship and see what the problem might be? Go right ahead, Mr. Monkey. First, Mr. Monkey checks the nose of the rocket ship. It's nice and pointy, very aerodynamic. Next, Mr. Monkey checks the seat. It seems to be in good working order. And finally, Mr. Monkey checks the control panel. Oops. All those switches and buttons seem to be working just fine. Well, Miss Mole, I'm not sure what the problem might be. You've built yourself a very sturdy ship. Oh, well, I'm not worried about it not working, but I still won't be able to see anything when I'm up there. What am I going to do, Mr. Monkey? Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Miss Mole lives underground, but she wants to explore everything above ground especially outer space. The only problem is she can't see anything while she's inside her rocket ship. Mr. Monkey needs to build something that Miss Mole can see out of. Kind of like her glasses, but for her rocket ship. Hmm. Mr. Monkey has a plan. He just needs a few supplies. First, he'll need one round piece of glass. Then he'll need a round piece of metal. Finally, he'll need 10 bolts. And of course, 
he'll need his trusty monkey wrench. Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, Mr. Monkey cuts a round hole in the hull of the rocket ship. Then he places the round piece of glass into the hole he just made, followed by the round piece of metal. Next, he secures it in place with the 10 bolts. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 bolts. And with that, Mr. Monkey is finished. What is it, Mr. Monkey? It's a window, Miss Mole. Now you'll be able to look out of it so you can see everywhere you go. Oh, thank you, Mr. Monkey. I can't wait to see all the amazing things in our universe. Speaking of which, let's get you into outer space, Miss Mole. Ready for countdown, Miss Mole? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off! I can see you, Mr. Monkey. I can see the whole garage. I can see everything. This is amazing. That's so bright out here. Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey goes back to his telescope. It's a hot and sunny day, and Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, is relaxing in the cool shade. Poor Mr. Monkey. His bananas are too hot because they were sitting out in the hot, hot sun. Just then, Mr. Monkey hears bells ringing. Visitor. Who could it be? It's Mrs. Penguin. Hi, Mrs. Penguin. Oh, Mr. Monkey, you've got to help me. I've been trying to sell ice cream cones by the beach, but it's a hot day and my ice cream keeps melting. Nobody wants to buy ice cream soup. Mmm. It's ice cream, all right. Mr. Monkey inspects the vehicle to find the source of the problem. He checks the tires, the windshield wipers, and even the horn. Everything seems fine, so Mr. Monkey checks the temperature. There's a hot setting and a cold setting. Mr. Monkey sees that the temperature is set all the way to cold, which means it's on full blast. Mr. Monkey can even see his breath. Of course it's cool now, Mr. Monkey. We're inside and the hot sun isn't shining down on my truck. Mr. Monkey swings over to his workbench to figure out this problem. Even though the cooling system is on full blast, the ice cream keeps melting because of the hot sun. How do we keep the truck out of the sun when it's at the beach? When Mr. Monkey goes to the beach, he likes to bring a big umbrella to stay cool in the shade. That gives Mr. Monkey an idea. Now, let's see. He needs four bolts. One, two, three, four. He also needs a round bracket and a beach umbrella. And of course, his trusty monkey wrench! (laughs) Mr. Monkey takes the round bracket and fastens it with the bolts. One, two, 
three, four. And now for the finishing touch. Mrs. Penguin's truck has a beach umbrella. Now even under the hot sun, her truck will always be parked in the cool shade. Mrs. Penguin loves it! And now Mrs. Penguin has an idea. Here you go! It's Mr. Monkey's favorite treat, an ice-cold banana split. Mm-mm, delicious! Goodbye, Mr. Monkey. Stay cool. Goodbye, Mrs. Penguin. Thanks for the ice-cold banana split. Uh-oh. Mr. Monkey better get that ice cream out of the hot sun. Another job well done. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was packing for his trip to the Monkey Mechanic Convention at Banana Beach, when suddenly, the garage bell rang. A visitor! Mr. Monkey loves having visitors, and he knows exactly who it is. It's Mr. Chameleon. Hi, Mr. Chameleon. Well, hello there, Mr. Monkey. All ready for your trip? Oh, yes, I can't wait. Thanks again for taking care of the garage while I'm away. No worries, Mr. Monkey. I came prepared. <laughs> now remember, if anyone comes in with a problem, just tell them I'll be back in the morning and we'll help them then. No worries, Mr. Monkey. Your garage is in good hands. I've got this. Terrific. See you in the morning. Bye, Mr. Monkey! With that, Mr. Monkey leaves for his monkey mechanic convention. Mr. Chameleon, Chameleon Mechanic. That's got a nice ring to it. Oh! Mr. Chameleon has a visitor. Who could it be? Why, it's Coach Moose, Ms. Squirrel, Miss Cow, and Mr. Husky. Hiya, everybody! Welcome to Mr. Monkey, uh, Mr. Chameleon, Chameleon Mechanic. How may I be a service? Hello, Hi, Mr. Chameleon. Is Mr. Monkey here? I have a problem. Oh, Mr. Monkey went on a little overnight trip. He'll be back in the morning. But, uh, maybe there's some way I can help you? After all, how hard could it be? I can help all of you. Tell me your problems. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Well, my car broke down and it won't move. And I've got to go buy more nuts. Car won't move. Got it. I've been taking my sled to the supermarket, but when I pull my sled home, all my groceries fall off. Food falls off sled. No problem. My hockey team wants to skate into summer, but there's no ice to skate on. Mm hmm. A problem that seemingly has nothing to do at all with your vehicle. Piece of cake. There's so much corn to harvest, and I can't get all the work done if I take breakfast, lunch, and dinner breaks. Your tractor needs to be working while you eat. Shouldn't be a problem. So, so can, can you, you help, help us, Mr. Us, Mr. Chameleon? Mr. Chameleon? Absolutely. I can fix all of it. I've totally got it. I just, uh, need a plan. I know. I'll head over to Mr. Monkey's workbench. That's how it works. He usually heads over there and comes back with a plan. All right, I'm here. And I guess I'm just supposed to wait for a plan to arrive. Shouldn't take too long. Being a mechanic is super easy. I don't know what all the fuss is about. Ha! 
hey, a pencil. Maybe if I start doodling on this blue paper, the plan will arrive. <laughs> ah, brilliant, Mr Chameleon, if I do say so myself. Ah, no, that's not a brilliant plan. That's just a lovely rendering of me on a skateboard. Maybe the plan is a uh, telescope. Ah, <laughs> I know, trampolines. That'll solve all the problems. Wait, space age technology. They're always talking about that. Marsha Tribe Polly's or I had Bancy Shoes. Bananas. Bananas could fix any problem, right? What about this wrench thingy? He always seems to use that. But what do I even do with it? Hi, Mr. Chameleon. How's it coming along there, champ? Oh, Miss Squirrel. I'm glad you're here. I figured it all out, Miss Squirrel. Come and look at this. The repairs just keep coming, Miss Squirrel. There's no solution because the repairs just keep coming. They won't stop. They'll never stop. Okay, I'll just leave you to it then. <laughs> Wake up, Mr. Chameleon, dude. What? What? What's this? Uh, you seem to have lost your gosh darn mind there, Mr. Chameleon. So uh, we got to talking, you know, and decided to fix each other's vehicles, thinking it might help you out there, eh? Is that a tea kettle? Oh yeah, see last time I was here, Mr. Monkey put a bunch of tea kettles on my snowmobile. And I figured Miss Cow could use one to make tea or hot soup while she drove her tractor. That way she could eat while still driving her tractor and get all her work done. Wow, great idea. Sure is. And last time I was here, Mr. Monkey hooked me up with solar panels to make my tractor move without gas. I reckon solar panels would make Miss Squirrel's broken down car move. Amazing. And last time I was in, Mr. Monkey made boxes for all of my nuts when I kept losing track of them. So I did the same thing for Mr. Husky. Now his groceries won't fall off his sled. And Mr. Monkey made me wheels for my sled, so I could use it in the summer. So I thought Coach Moose's hockey team could use wheels on their skates. Now they can skate in the summer. Ah, but I didn't help at all. Some Mr. Chameleon, chameleon mechanic I turned out to be. Actually, you did kind of help. Once you fell asleep in the middle of the floor, we realized that rather than waiting for someone else to solve our problems, we could solve them together. So what you're saying is, you couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mr. Mr. Chameleon. There goes some very satisfied customers. Good morning, Mr. Chameleon. Things sure look like they were busy around here. How'd it go? Easy peasy, Mr. Monkey. You could say it pretty much took care of itself. Anyway, I'll be on my way. Gotta see if there's anyone else out there who needs my help. It's all about teamwork, Mr. Monkey. Teamwork. Welcome home. And with that, Mr. Monkey gets back to work. What happened to my workbench? <laughs>